Murder mystery? Find out how criminal justice CTE students are breaking out the four walls of the classroom with a rather interesting lab activity. And shocking new details on the deadly wildfire in Australia that's leaving millions or perhaps even billions of animals dead. South Bend has a new vision and a new mayor. We've been a booming industrial city, a regional leader. Find out what local leaders think of the new administration as James Miller is sworn in as South Bend 33rd mayor. All that and much more up next on Buzz in the Bend. From our studios at Riley High School, it's time for Michiana's number one student talk show, Buzz in the Bend. Hello and welcome to Buzz in the Bend, Michiana's number one student talk show. I'm Alex Almanza from Riley High School. I'm Cecily Ball from Adams High School. I'm Bernardo Malone from Riley High School. And isn't it, isn't it crazy just to think that it's our last semester as seniors? And I mean, what are we going to miss about high school? I mean, there's so many things. I mean, not the college applications. I know that for one thing. <laughs> but yes. I mean, just like hanging out, you know, just like being around great people. I'm just really going to miss that. Definitely. Yeah, same here for me. I'm um, hanging around with some friends and some teachers too. More, more likely the teachers because they have more fun than the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Most Sorry. likely, I'm, I'm going to miss the, uh, the free education. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now we've got to yeah. go pay thousands and hundreds of dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to miss that, definitely. And Anybody 21st century uh, scholars here? Not me. I Not me no either. Me. <laughs> oh. I, well, I mean, the, lucky you. I signed up eighth grade year. I mean, it wasn't such a big, yeah. you know. I was like um, two days late on the deadline, so. Ooh. Well, I mean, if you're an eighth grader, I definitely recommend you, you do join. Um, they, they pay all your tuition. Uh, for any Indiana high school? Yes. Um, what college? Indiana high schools only, so <laughs> not, not out of state. They wouldn't go crazy like that. Right. <laughs> right. And also, uh, also some news for you. You're getting surgery on, uh, you know, this week. Well, um, <laughs> yes, that's news, but bad news at the same time because I'm pretty mm -hmm. scared. Um, so I'm getting surgery on my ACL that I tore in football. Um, season so right wow so well good luck with that I mean it's Thank gonna be so a, a great you know and you're not it takes a lot of endurance to, to <laughs> get through something like that <laughs> be down so you're gonna be on crutches or, or what yeah I'm gonna be on crutches I try to get them to give me a wheelchair one of the power ones because mm -hmm. crutches is hurtful very wow. yeah like, I remember that that, that, that hurts <laughs> remember when I first to, uh, got injured and yeah. came. <laughs> then the, the hallways is so long it's like so make me sweat. Yeah. Ah. Let's get a wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> also happening this week is uh, Riley High School is holding auditions for uh, Little Shop of Horrors, and it's going to be a great play. I mean, obviously, the plays here at Riley High School have been great so lately, um, especially, you know, Brayden Allison, yes. who recently directed um, The Case of Alex Hansen, which, you remember, Cooper was on the set, and uh, it was a gr it's an amazing show. So uh, definitely talk with the people around, Miss Vordy. Um, in the choir can get you more information on auditions, so be sure to check out that. Now, Riley's criminal justice CTE class got a taste of the real world with a lab activity that gives them an idea of how a crime scene works. Every role from photographer, sketch artist, and coroner are all represented in this activity. Let's take a look at Mr. Armet's criminal justice CTE class. You have to know the process. The crime scene investigation unit is very scientific, and everybody's familiar with the, uh, the, movie, the show is CSI. That's crime scene investigators, and uh, so they are learning the skills of being a crime scene investigator. Uh, it has application in law if they become an attorney, if they become a prosecutor, if they become a defense attorney. Okay. The other application would be if they were to enter the police academy as young cadets, and they would eventually reach a point where they would learn how to engage in crime scene investigation because uh, you may not be part of the unit but every law enforcement officer has to be trained in the skills uh, because they're all first responders they may not be a part of a special unit but they're all first responders so they have to know the rudimentary process of evolving crime scene investigation it's interesting to like learn about the law side of it the law enforcement the crime scenes and how to deal with all that and like forensics um, I plan on going into law school and this just helps helps just to get like the criminal justice background. Any incoming junior or senior within the four South Bend high schools can join the class. See your school's counselor for more information. Now I got to be a part of the action too, of course, with every crime scene. Crime scene. Uh, you see a news reporter, you see the news truck, so I was there with my camera and 
um, it was, you know, it was pretty awesome. But um, I think the the cool thing about it was that you people were passing by and you, they were all interested in the right. CTE class and some of them thought it was real. If right. I passed by, I'd be like, what the heck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is there What's going on here? <laughs> and why are the kids on the floor on their yeah. computers just not giving a, you know, not giving a crap? It's, but it, but they were working. It was, it, it was a whole, you know, it was a whole team initiative. Mm -hmm. Someone was sketching, you know, the artists, someone were grabbing, you know, descriptions. So that was really cool. But, um, yeah, that was something. actually pretty good because I, I like going out to crime scenes, um, interviewing witnesses and mm -hmm. victims and stuff like that. I don't know why, but I just find it so uh, fun. Well, fun, but sad at the same time, yeah. you know, because every shooting and death is sad, so. Definitely. You've, you've had your fair share of, right, of, definitely. of different crime scene investigations, yeah. so um, I'd say you're, you're pretty good at it. Pretty yeah, good. pretty good. <laughs> Recently, I had a chance to see South Bend new mayor, James Miller, get sworn into office. Hi, James Miller. Hi, James Miller. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the state of Indiana. And the state of Indiana. And I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. And partially. And partially. And diligently. And diligently. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of mayor. Of the office of mayor. Of the city of South Bend, Indiana. Of the city of South Bend, Indiana. James Miller was sworn in as South Bend 33rd Mayor alongside City Clerk Don Jones and Common Council members, five which are brand new to the council. Muller declared South Bend is back. To get there, we will need to join together and seek to understand our differences like never before. During our rich history, we've been a booming industrial city, a regional leader. Now Muller and Councilman Davis both have plans for the youth in the coming days. Looking to start a second district council or caucus to talk, to talk over some of the issues that impact the children or, or the youth in our district and that within a given area. I'm also looking forward to participating in the actions of the youth council from the South Bend Common Council as well. I'm also interested in participating in some of the actions that are happening with the school corporation to ensure that we have quality and top-notch education in South Bend. It's part of our cradle to career uh, education approach that we've talked about and it's also part of our uh, violence answer in terms of a summer employment program for our youth to make sure that they're getting connected to opportunities down the road, but also having something to do during the summer when they're off from school. Good luck to Mayor Miller during his first term in office. I'm Bernardo Malone with SBS TV. It was a very good um, experience for me to get out there and cover the uh, mayor's ceremony. It was uh, pretty bad lighting in there, so I had to work around that. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> But uh, it's, it's good to hear that James Mueller is doing a great job. Um, I'm, I've heard he's got a few orders of business just starting out. Yep. And his predecessor, Pete Buttigieg, is on the trail, as always, going out and um, campaigning. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on, on James Mueller? Is he different from Pete, or is he improving? Um, or is it just going to be the same? Uh, well, um, I'm going to give him a chance. Although I did like Mayor Pete, I believe Mayor Pete um, could have did some things better in uh, some way. But, you know, you always got to give somebody a chance. Like, mm -hmm. I gave you a chance, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Second chance is always very Yes, important. very. Mm -hmm. More than one billion animals are now thought to have been killed by the record-breaking wildfires in Australia. According to Chris Dickman, a professional at uh, ecology at the University of Sydney, more than 80 million animals have likely been killed in the Australian state of New South Wales alone, meaning that the number of animals affected nationally likely exceeds 1 billion. The, the death toll of these animals, I, I did see. And I was, I mean, I wasn't reading it wrong. It was a, almost a billion animals. Wow. Yeah. Almost a billion with a B. <laughs> with a B. Yes, yes. That, a that's a lot of animals, especially for Australia. I mean, all these wildfires are, are just, you know, just tragic. And, of course, as we see all the, uh, um, the pictures of the koalas with, um, with the burn marks, and mm -hmm. it's very tragic. But I mean, we, we do have some hope, uh, especially the Potawatomi Zoo nearby is donating some of the money. Uh, that they make at the door to the Australian um, wildfire uh, fund, especially with the firefighters trying to fight all the fires. So, um, something to consider. So, if you want to, if you want to donate to the wildfire um, fund itself, you can do that. We'll have the uh, the link below, or you can also participate by going to Potawatomi Park. They'll be open during the uh, during the winter. Right. That's, that's so nice of them to donate money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I, although I don't really like wildlife and wildlife animals, that's just so 
Heartwarming. They were they were here before us. Right. So I mean, nice we, we we have to, we have to take care of them. And after the break, we'll chat with actor and producer Jordan Hodges. So don't go away. Here in the small town of South Bend, Indiana, the name Sparky the Clown brings some significance. Sparky has entertained children and adults at birthday parties, parades, and festivals. Not to mention, he makes some pretty cool animal balloons. But about two years ago, his whole life changed. Narragon was diagnosed with essential tremor, a nervous system disorder that causes shaking and usually targets a person's dominant hand. Back in August, Narragon underwent deep brain stimulation surgery and costs were high. To help pay for those costs, Barry's son Steve went out to set up a fundraising event, and the turnout was overwhelming. We started out just by having, making up flyers, going into businesses, asking for donations, and then I started, uh, once I started a Facebook page, though, it just grew, and that's where people that were just acquaintances started wanting to donate and give. I mean, just the amount of support was, was amazing. The family love and, and caring uh, is kind of gone in today's business. So it, it, to find someone that is, is all about that is rare and should be blessed. So that speaks volumes for yeah. what he did for everybody because they just, you didn't, you didn't have to ask. Everybody heard about it and they just drove up and said, here, you know, he's, he's that guy. Working on my voyage and building my strength back up. You can get treatment for it and be free of tremors. Fun, real. Thank you so much for doing the and for all the people coming. In terms of where Sparky the Clown is going, well, let's just say those shoes are too big to fill. Alex Almanza, SBS TV, South Bend. Hello and welcome back to Buzz in the Bend. Here on our show we have Jordan Hodges, filmmaker, writer, actor, and we're going to take a look at your upcoming film, which is uh, which should be pretty good. So even though that clip was kind of short and we didn't, you know, get much out of what the story is about, um, would you tell us a little bit about, you know, the process of making this film and how you made it? Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, it's called the Shade Shepherd. It's a um, a 1980s uh, 80s period piece. Mm -hmm. um, I play a psychiatrist who's trying to get his brother, who I guess you would call him down on his luck, you know, for. Uh, G-rated audiences here, um, and I'm trying to get him the, the Canadian border to escape a murder charge. So I got a bow and arrow. It's an adventure film. It's, it's fun. Um, you know, we yeah, we shot it around here. Uh, it took me about a year to write it, and you know, it's uh, going on the third year now, working on it. And we're going to distribution here in 2020. Oh wow! So yeah. I mean, obviously a, a year, and you said a year in production. A or? year writing, and then yeah, about well, we shot actually for like it took 22 days, I think. Um, in the woods with bugs and you mm -hmm. know a lot of the film takes place uh, in the in the forest uh, around this area actually right well wow. so what are some of the um, you know the challenges of making obviously a film uh, in this area it's not Hollywood but mm -hmm. you come it comes with some challenges such as weather and some of the things that we don't see what are some of those challenges yeah uh, well that's you know you always you think about that when you go to shoot something I've shot I've, this is my second feature film and I've shot both um, Sam Castles was my previous one and I've um, I've shot them both here in this area you know the challenge is is we don't have um, the tools that are available in Hollywood it's you know uh, one of the lens the camera lens goes down or the cameras goes down like they're, these aren't just mom and pop cameras we grab at Walmart. You know, they're they're one hundred fifty thousand dollar machines, and you know, LA's full of them. But you know, closest one you're going to get maybe Chicago, Detroit, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so 
you just have to prepare for things that you just don't have access to things like you do in LA. But the positive of shooting here, which I think completely outweighs the, um, you know, the, the finding the tools, is everybody's still excited about making movies here. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, uh, hey, we're shooting a movie. You know, uh, can we use your coffee shop? Oh yeah, you know, uh, yeah, we'll put your logo on the credits. You know, invite you to the premiere. It'll uh -huh. be fun to see your, you know, your place of business on the big screen. Right. So people are really excited here in LA. You know. They're so used to it. Yeah, it's you more know? like a yeah. nuisance then, or but, but not so much. It's more like, eh, they're filming down the street. Okay. Yeah, and you you got to be willing to pay, you yeah. know? So, yeah. Now, how did you get started into making the film? Uh, I was uh, in college uh, at IUSB, actually, um, just right down the road here. And uh, I was a fine arts major. I love art and things. And um, I had to take an acting class as one of my electives, you mm -hmm. know, be, to become a full-time student. And... Uh, Basically, um, I was kind of failing the class. Uh, I did not take it seriously. I had roll in the acting class like five minutes late holding a Starbucks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, so he's like, well, Jordan, you know, like to, to pass this, basically, you got to audition. And so I auditioned. Uh, I didn't show up with a monologue or anything. I just told a story, uh, a personal story um, to this random director, this stranger. And uh, he was like, you know, if you can share that story with a stranger, you could share, you know, that with an audience, that, you know, that type of intimacy. Uh, and he cast me, um, and I finished the run of the play. I just fell in love with it, dropped out, um, moved to Chicago, and booked my first movie role. Right, so not only you, are, uh, you went to school here, you're also giving back to this community. Yeah, I mean, I like I like using uh, up and coming filmmakers and actors when I do shoot. We I try to do a half LA um, cast and crew, mm -hmm. and then half Midwest cast and crew if I can. Nice. Yeah. So when you go into these projects, um, what specifically do you look for, whether it be like in the script or what just makes you go, yeah, I want to do this? Well, you know, I, I'm attached to some projects and I've done projects of just being an actor, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that's a different conversation of I relate to this. Like I, mm -hmm. I, there's something here, like I have a through line. I can make this character interesting. Now, the movies I've made here, I have written. So I was so involved with you know, I know I'm playing this character right. from the blank page starting, basically. Um, and it's really about writing. It's almost like a therapy, I guess. You know, you kind of write what you know. And it, through my writing and storytelling, I deal with things personally myself. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know if that answers a question, but, like, it's very specific to just, you know, what type of story I want to tell, you know? Like, mm -hmm. lately I've been really in the mood. I've done, like, these drama thrillers and adventures, and I've been really in the mood to do, like, a horror kind of thriller supernatural thing because it's challenging. It scares me to death to do that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, maybe I should try to do it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, another thing about it is that you're making your own films. You don't mm -hmm. have some big company looking over your mm -hmm. shoulder saying, this is what we want, this is what right. you, the rules that you should stick to. So you kind of have that freedom to it as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we're still making movies. With, you know, the movies I even make, there's still a lot of money to make mm -hmm. them. You know what I mean? You're still talking, you know, many times six digits. Um, and, you know, people's got to, you know, believe in you enough, like me being the lead actor, um, there's a, that's a lot of money for people to put up and be yeah. like, Jordan, do a good job, you know, because if, uh -huh. I, if I'm no good, then the movie's no good, you know, and, and, and kind of applies to a lot of the key crews. So, um, uh, sorry, what was your question again? Yeah, no, I was just saying, like, yeah. you know, so you kind of have that freedom of right. being your own, you don't have some big company looking over your shoulder right. saying, this is what we want, this is the actors that we sure. want. It, it's just kind of your own personal preference of what yeah. And, and I mean, because that, to me, that like doesn't make it that fun. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, you know, it's like you want, you kind of want your uh, cake and eat it too. It's like, uh -huh. I want to make the art exactly like I want to make it, but I don't want to play by anybody's rules. And you yeah. don't really get that. So I've tried to find this kind of balance, this middle ground of, okay, I can make a smaller movie and do it my way, you know, instead of going after a bigger movie and not doing it my way. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, I, li I, do, I do like the element of control. Now, I haven't directed these films, like The Shade Shepherd, my new one, like the director, Chris Felici, who co-wrote it with me. You know, he had Final Cut, and, but, you know, you get people around you that you trust. You know, you, when you're making a film, it's such a collaborative effort that I always try to be, like, not, the, you know, not really necessarily the dumbest guy in the room, but everybody around me offers something that I don't have. And I definitely offer something that they don't. So, you know. Yeah, you, you just definitely need people around like that. Yeah, trust. So, do you have a specific favorite from 2019? 
Um, I, I would say movie, I'm still um, dissecting that. Like I'm in the Screen Actors Guild, like mm -hmm. that's my union. So during award season right now, I get sent all the movies that are like going to be at like the award shows that are still in theaters. You know, like last night I just watched A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood where Tom Hanks plays Mr. Rogers and he's fantastic. I would, I could say the best, pre the performance this year, the best actor I've seen this year is definitely by far Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker. Like, I have not seen somebody give a performance like that since Daniel Day-Lewis and There Will Be Blood. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll win the Oscar. I've been really excited about that film this year. Now, one last question. This upcoming premiere for this film, tell us a little bit about it and, you know, where is it going to be? How much is it? Okay, yeah, so uh, uh, my feature film, The Shade Shepherd, is um, I'm showing it for the first time in Indiana around, you know, where we shot it. And uh, it will be on January 18th, which is a Saturday, uh, at AMC 16 on, you know, it's right here in South Bend, uh, Chippewa, um, for one night only. A lot of cast and crew will be there. Um, there'll be a red carpet. I mean, it's optional if you want to get your photo taken, but it's, you know, it's a real Hollywood premiere. Got right. people flying in from LA for it and this and that. And uh, afterwards, you know, there'll be a Q&A with myself and a couple other uh, other filmmakers to be, you know, people can ask questions about, how we made the film and you know and it'll be moderated and this and that just so just if you're looking for a date night a fun event you know um you can get it going to the shadeshepherd.com slash indiana or go to eventbrite and just google or search the shade shepherd i'm sure maybe they'll put it down here if we can get that rigged <laughs> up yes. and uh and uh yeah so and i just want to stress that like it's you know it's like going to a normal movie okay it's like any other movie it's just this one happened to be shot in the area and there'll be the filmmakers there afterwards to talk about it. But so, you know, get it, it's $19 a ticket. Uh, yeah, and if you come, um, make sure you say hi to me and that you saw me on the show. Well, you heard it here first, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you very much, Jordan. Uh, for Cecily, Bernardo, and Jordan, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.